Morning everyone, it's Sunday here in Spain, Sunday's football day over here. Uh, I'm going to do a one-off vlog uh, on uh, lower league football today. I'm going to go go watch our first team play away at a, a side called uh, Arenas Almia, uh, just outside Granada. Um, at 12 o'clock kickoff, uh, fifth versus sixth in their, in their league in the fifth tier of Spanish football. Uh, and then I'm going to head back and go straight to our Ulvenil group, which is the under-19 group. Um, and they're playing against, uh, aside from from uh, inner city Mal Malaga, called uh, 26 de Febrero, 26th of February. Um, which is uh, in the, the highest tier of um, regional under-19 football before you go to um, the national and division d'honneur. Um, levels, which is, is where uh, most of the, the pro academies and the top sides play. Um, so heading up inland now, it's about 13, 14 degrees where I am up by the coast just outside Malaga. Uh, it's currently three degrees uh, in Granada, uh, just in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada. So I'll see some snowy top mountains. Um, I've got my cup of coffee for the car journey, my cafe con leche. Um, and uh, when I get there, I'll, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about and I'll show you a little bit more about what the ground's like and uh, what the culture of football at the fifth tier in Spanish football is like um, before, uh, before doing a little, little evaluation of the game, I guess, afterwards and then heading on to the, the Uvenil game back down here at, at our home ground in Rincon. Um, so, see you later. Okay, so I've arrived here in Armia. It's uh, much colder than it was down on the coast. It's about eight degrees here. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm obviously turning soft because uh, I've been here long enough to, to find that those sort of temperatures really cold. Uh, so yeah, just arrived at the ground. There's our, our team bus. Um, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna head round. I can't hear a, a huge buzz around the ground, so I'm not expecting too many fans at the game. Um, we are, as I said, fifth in, uh, in the fifth tier of, of Spanish football. We came down from the fourth tier called the Tercera last year under, I think, difficult circumstances. We finished seventh bottom, I think it was, and, and, uh, and still got relegated for a number of reasons, which I won't go into. Um, the manager, uh, a, a bit of a legend in the, in the area, um, a guy called uh, Bravo came back to the club uh, in the pre-season and has rebuilt the team. Uh, Bravo was um, the captain of Malaga when they got promoted to La Liga about 20 years ago. Uh, in fact, in the local papers, there was uh, there was something recently about uh, a famous victory at the New Camp against Barcelona when he played. He had a bit of a Terry Butcher moment with a big uh, big bandage around uh, around his head after after receiving a, a gash. Um, we shed loads of blood coming out of it. Um, but he's a lovely fella, really nice guy, absolute legend in the local area. But um, uh, he was coaching uh, the M Malaga Uvenil under-19 team last year, but he's come back to the club. He actually got the club promoted from the league we're in now into Tercera uh, a few years ago. And now uh, working with Juan, his uh, assistant, who's a, a fantastic pro licence coach, um, the pair of them have rebuilt the team and after a, a, a difficult start to the season, I think, with some new players and, and trying to find the right right, uh, right mix, they've uh, eventually got uh, got the team playing and, and winning um, and gradually moving up the table. And uh, as I say, currently fifth, um, playing against the team who are sixth today. So um, let's see let's see how this goes. Just arriving at the ground now, about to pay my, pay my money. Um, I think it's a grass pitch. Oh no, it's not. No, it's, it looks like an artificial pitch actually. Uh, so, I'm going to go in, pay my money. I've got about five minutes before kickoff, um, and uh, let's see what this is all about. So we're half, uh, half an hour into the game, we're 1-0 down, um, started very slow, uh, doesn't really look like the front five or six really want to get on the ball, so been a lot of possession around the back. We're playing in yellow our away kit, um, the opponents are pretty strong physically, uh, certainly in the defensive part of the pitch and, and the forwards as well, 
similar to a lot of teams I've seen at this sort of level. They're, they've got seven or eight really physical athletic players and then two or three inventive players in midfield and that's where uh, their goal came from in the, in the build-up to the penalty, uh, the little number 10 um, just playing in the hole in front of the cent central defenders, just picked up the ball and didn't have enough pressure on him and uh, slid a little ball through to one of his one of his teammates who went round the keeper, the keeper pulled him down and yeah, one nil down. So, so far I don't think uh, Bravo will be very happy with uh, the performance. I don't think there's probably enough players looking to get on the ball. Uh, and on top of that, he's getting rattled and the, the benches are having a little bit of chirp between each other. Um, he's already been given a yellow card, our manager. Uh, so, yeah, not um, not the best best start to the game for, for Rincon. Um, but uh, hopefully we're starting to grow into the game a little bit and uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to want to get into them at half time. Looks like he's just having a little conversation with one of their one of their bench over there as well. But all all looks very cordial now after uh, a little bit of handbags not too long ago. time um, we haven't really got out of second gear to be honest um, the opposition are pretty strong well organized um, they've shown the only bit of quality there's been so far but they're, they're just put, applying a little bit more pressure being maybe a little bit more physical a bit quicker to the ball and um, it doesn't look like like our um, our attacking players can get on the ball for long enough or when they do they're not doing anything with real conviction so um, fingers crossed uh, second half um, the players will show a little bit more confidence and uh, a little bit more desire to get on the ball and make things happen in uh, in the attacking uh, part of the game. Um, the club itself, from what I can see, is a, 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 I've just been told that they uh, they were a, a, a third tier club, so a Segunda B uh, club a few years back. Um, spent most of their their history in the in the Tercera League, so the league above the fourth tier of Spanish football. Um, seems like a, a nice enough little ground. Um, I think that the grass. Um, or the sorry, the, the surface was, has been um, covered uh, with artificial grass in the last few years. Previously, it was was natural grass, um, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty quiet. There can't be more than 100, maybe 150 people here, uh, which is a bit disappointing, I guess, um, when you consider it's it's a club that's been obviously a lot higher. Um, but decent decent enough little setup, and the, the playing surface and the size of the pitch is. To be honest, should really suit us. We should be able to get the ball down and play on it because some of the pitches that I've seen at this level can be a little bit smaller than this, or they can be slightly older artificial surfaces where you get a lot of bumps and the bounce of the ball is not the best, and uh, it's hard to get the ball under control. But this is a decent playing surface. It's fairly new, new uh, artificial grass, 3G, 4G stuff, um, and, and and plenty of space to play in as well. It's not it's not a postage stamp of a pitch. So fingers crossed um, we can get on the ball. I've certainly seen enough. Um, in terms of when we have asked them one or two questions, that they're not the best with the ball on the deck. They, um, they can they can eat eat up the the long balls like food and drink, and it, that's easy for their their big centre halves. But uh, it'd be interesting to see if we can get the ball on the deck and look to play down the sides and in front of them and behind them and uh, start to ask them a few more questions. Second half, I'm going to go get coffee. I'm bloody freezing. Very important piece of uh, any vlog from what I'm told on a match day is uh, the food. Um, you can see all the locals getting their food in here now. I've just gone and asked for a coffee. Um, they don't have any coffee. So I've got a glass of wine. Salud. And to eat got mikas which is like breadcrumbs kind of fried up with some pork and peppers and bits and pieces in it um, so yeah slightly different to uh, 
pie and bovril. I could do with some bovril right now, if I'm brutally honest. But um, yeah, this is uh, Sunday lunch, Spanish style at, uh, at the football. So yeah, I don't know how tasty it's going to be, but uh, to be honest, I'd eat a scabby horse between two pieces of bread at the moment. So I'm going to get stuck into it now with my, wash it down with a wine and hopefully, hopefully the second half will be a little bit better than the first. Some handbags there, seems to happen about 15, 16 times a game. Every time I watch a game over here, there's, a, there's always some kind of drama, um, but not a huge amount behind it. Um, we got back in it, 1-1. One, one. Uh, they conceded a, a penalty just three or four minutes after the restart. Um, bit of a soft one, really. Um, it was a penalty, but uh, yeah, just that they weren't really concentrating, stuck a leg out and um, yeah, we got back in it. So, and to be honest, since then, we've been a better side. Um, control of possession much higher up the pitch and um, starting to ask a lot of questions of them so going into the last probably 15 20 minutes of the game now um, hoping that uh, we can push on and, uh, and and get the win because that they uh, they're just going more and more direct they're not not they're, well, they're certainly panicking in possession and uh, it looks like some um, you know there's, there's a, a good chance that we can maybe get get th the three points uh, the Rincon fans in the crowd as uh, you'll be able to see here are, uh, are the ones who are making noise now, um, which is great. And uh, yeah, it's the, it's, it's the yellow shirts who seem to have the ball a lot more in, uh, in this half of the pitch. So um, yeah, fingers crossed. So we're in about the 90th minute now. Uh, second half has uh, kind of been fairly even. I would say the last, certainly the last 20 minutes or so. Rincon were on top after they scored, dominated possession and had the ball a much higher up the pitch, looked a lot livelier. A lot, lot keener to get on the ball, the forwards. Um, but now we're, it, like saying, in about the 90th minute. Um, I think a draw would probably be a fair result, but uh, it'd be great if we could nick it this last minute or two. I'm going to turn it round now because uh, we've got a free kick um, in a fairly dangerous area. Like I say, last minute or two now. So. Go on, go on. Ooh. You never know, we might just nick it. Vamos, Ville! Nah, looks like it's going to end up a draw. Probably a fair result, I think. Quick recap, finished 1-1. I'm warming up now in the queue at McDonald's to get my coffee. Uh, I thought a draw was probably a fair result. We were much better second half. Um, they weren't a bad team. Uh, so you'll probably view that as not a bad point on the road. Although if we'd have got out of the blocks a bit quicker, perhaps it would have been all three. Um, uh, it was a nice little setup they've got there. Um, that I think they'll be one of the strongest teams in the league. I've seen four other teams apart from us in this league since we dropped down, and they're probably the best that I've seen. We're well organised, two or three real good quality players on the ball, um, and uh, and a nice little setup, like I say. Uh, in terms of the, this division, um, 
the, the money that the guys are on, I don't know for sure, but our boys are, are on roughly maybe 100 euros a week or something like that, plus a couple of small bonuses. Um, but for that, they do an awful lot of work. They travel and train four nights a week at our place, which is terrific, great commitment. Um, and then the games that they play can be as far as three or four hours away. So it's a big commitment, really, when you consider um, you know, the kind of money that they get um, in, in what is, as I say, fifth tier football over here. I'd say the standard is probably the equivalent to maybe level eight, so step four, um, something like that in the UK. That's what, that's what I would say the quality of the game was up today. The league above that they played in last year to Sarah, the top teams have got are on full time money with big followings um, and, and on much more money, but we were one of the weaker teams at that level. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm heading down to the coast where I hope it's warmer now. So see you soon. Okay, much more comfortable now. Uh, I'm down here on the coast. Uh, it's about 10 degrees warmer, a uh, bit cloudy, but yeah, much better. Um, so now at, um, at our home ground, Rincon, and uh, about 15 minutes before kickoff, uh, I'm going to try and nip in quickly before the players get in and go and just show you the changing room area uh, and some of the uh, some of the areas just underneath the main stand over there. Um, just to give you a bit of an indication of what it what it looks and feels like behind the scenes at the club quickly before the game starts. See you soon. Okay, so this is the uh, this is a grass. It's a fantastic setup. Really, really lucky to work or have worked at a club and continue to be associated with a club with such a good setup. Um, this is. Uh, this is the, the players' entrance. I'm just going to go down quickly before the players come out. Go down. Kind of what I would envisage the continental style setup would be. Going down. Lots of changing rooms, referees changing rooms through there. The teams are just getting ready to come out. The away team there. Miguel Angel's team in the dressing room at the moment. Going out to go. Through when else. So, referee's room, and you can see lots of uh, old teams up here. Um, as you walk down here, we've got lots of kit rooms, uh, secretary's office, uh, coordinator's office, Juan Carlo. Uh, then we have a media room in here which is used for um, some team meetings and obviously any kind of big media stuff. Sometimes when players are uh, assigned and, uh, and announced to the media, uh, we've got the sponsors board in there and the flag and what have you. So um, it's a fantastic, fantastic setup, all of this underneath the main stand. Uh, really, really terrific facilities. Um, so yeah, it just gives you a a bit of an indication as to what the, what the what it looks like underneath the stand that most people don't get to see um, so yeah fantastic players are just coming out now uh, Miguel Angela and Bernardo I'll be I'll just wait down here so show you actually one of the other dressing rooms that isn't being used at the moment. The dressing room that my team used a lot last year actually. So this is this is a dressing room that isn't just like a like third or fourth dressing room but uh, yeah, highlights how good the facilities are. Um, so in a moment I'm going to go out there and, uh, and I'll uh, I'll give you a bit more indication as to what the game's all about. Um, but uh, yeah I'll wait for the players to go out and I'll, I'll go and take my seat. Uh, game started fairly even so far. Um, just to recap, I, I was wrong this morning when I said they were they were playing uh, the 26 de febrero, which translates to 26th of February. Uh, they're actually playing a side called Udi uh, San Andres or Dos Hermanas de San Andres, uh, which translates to the two sisters of San Andres. Um, some strange names in the, in the game over here in the Malaga City region. Um, 
the, they are, I think, fifth or sixth from bottom, and we're fifth, I think, in the league at the moment, maybe fourth, actually. Um, so you would think that uh, our team should, should win this. Uh, it looks like a young team we've got out today. There's two or three of the more experienced under-19s players who aren't playing. Um, the manager is a guy called Miguel Angel um, Gonzalez, who uh, has played a lot of football in the local area, played for Malaga, uh, was in Real Madrid's youth setup, um, was also signed at Atletico Madrid, uh, although he never played a first team game. But uh, he, he finished playing when he was about 27, 28. Uh, lovely guy, speaks a little bit of English, and uh, I've, I've taken a, a session for his team here. Uh, we're not, not with many of these players now, that, that was probably 18 months ago. Um, but uh, yeah, he's a lovely guy, well thought of at the club, and I can see him perhaps going on to be the first team manager in time. Certainly very well respected in, uh, in Malaga football, footballing circles. Uh, this team got promoted two years ago to this level, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the quality of the game this afternoon, I don't think is going to be the, the highest. Um, certainly not one of the, the most competitive games they're going to have. Um, but uh, regardless, there's some very good technical players out there. Um, and as you can probably see, uh, the, the ground is probably, well, there's certainly more people watching this than there were the first team game up in Armia a couple of hours ago. So, um, yeah, and, and I dare say we'll, we'll probably be more as, uh, as, the game, as the afternoon goes on. The Spanish families will probably still be eating. Uh, in town, so some of them may well be just uh, gradually making their way up to the ground. Uh, so yeah, but um, so far fairly evenly balanced game, um, but I would expect us to be getting on top before too too long. I'll show you this corner and then uh, come back to you later on. That's the first team just arriving back. <laughs> Beat them quite comfortably as you'd expect. action of the first half we've just gone two one up um, we went one nil up with a really well worked goal and dominated the game for probably 20 minutes or so they came back into it the last 10 15 scored a really well worked goal themselves and uh, went that game went a little bit flat after that everyone a bit frustrated on the home side but uh, just got a, a penalty there for a high foot so a third penalty of the day on camera for me uh, two one at half time, and uh, yeah, the ground's filling up as I expected. It's probably I'd say two hundred people here now. Um, certainly more atmosphere here for a, a, an Uvenil under 19s game than there was for a first team game up in Armia. See you soon. I have absolutely no idea what's going on here. They've just equalised to make it 3-3. Three, three. Uh, and something's kicked off with the crowd. Uh, a player's been, one of their players has been sent off. I think he threw something at the crowd. And then the crowd's, I don't know what, some, someone said something or whatever. And uh, it looks like the coach of, the, of uh, San Andres has told his players, we're going off. Um, so no one really knows what's going on here, but um, like I said before, there's always some sort of drama. three to San Andres we took the lead with uh, about 10 minutes to go um, they played well second half in all fairness um, and then there was chaos 
Um, again, some major drama. I don't really know why, um, but uh, lo loads of drama, loads of loads of posturing, loads of handbags. A couple of people sent off, one from each side. Lots of people in the in the stands getting involved. Um, their coach nearly took the players off, as you probably saw from that video. And then um, there was, the, I think, the referee indicated there was only a couple of minutes left. Uh, we went up one end and, and, and missed to make it 4-2. They went up the other end and made it 3 all. And then, uh, <laughs> amazingly, they went and, went and scored again um, with 30 seconds of the game left. Um, so, yeah, not um, not a great result for our boys. Not expected. Look, look, well, I know we had some players out. Um, fairly young team, but uh, I think they were expected to, to beat them, to be honest. Um, but fair play to San Andres. They came back and, um, yeah, uh, they uh, they got the win. So end of a long day for me, or fairly long day, um, but uh, always enjoyable to go to a couple of games. Um, and I hope you got some insight into uh, Spanish football, uh, good and bad. See you soon, guys.